Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we will see few top core Java interview questions which are mostly asked for fresher interviews. If you want to learn more about Java, please do check out my channel. I already have playlists available for core Java and Java 8 features. And if you like the videos, please do like, share and subscribe. So without any further delay, let's start. So the first question which can be asked to you is, we all know that Java is an object oriented programming, but the question may come to you like, is Java actually a pure object oriented programming? So the answer to that will be Java is not a pure object oriented programming. And the reason behind that is because Java still supports primitive data types like int, float, double, etc. So these are not objects. That is why Java is not a pure object oriented programming. And as you can see on the right hand side here, we have the properties of a pure object oriented programming. It should support encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, all the predefined types should be object, all the user defined types should be object, all operations performed on objects must be only through the methods. So out of these properties, the only property which Java does not satisfy is all the predefined types should be object. So in this case, we can see we have int, float, double, which are predefined types, but are not objects. So due to this reason, Java cannot be considered as a pure object oriented programming language. Next question is uh, difference between JVM and JRE. Both will look almost similar to you, but there is a difference. Though JVM, it is actually Java virtual machine. It is an abstract machine, which provides a runtime environment in Java to run its bytecode. But if we see what is JRE, JRE is a runtime environment which actually is the implementation of JVM. So here you can see JVM actually does not exist but JRE exists. JVM is something that will tell you uh, what needs to be done. How it has to be done that is defined in Java runtime environment. It physically exists on the machine. It contains the set of libraries and uh, all the classes which are required for uh, providing a runtime. For example, we can take an example of interface and its implementation. We can consider JVM as an interface where the method is declared but implementation is not provided. But JRE is a class which is actually implementing the JVM and providing the implementation of method defined in the JVM. Next question they can ask you like uh, what are the memory areas allocated by JVM. So there are mainly five areas allocated uh, by JVM. First one is class or method area. It stores the class structures and method code. Then we have heap memory. Heap memory is further divided into multiple sections but let's not uh, uh, deep dive into that right now. If you want to learn more about uh, heap memory I have already uploaded one heap memory video so you can check out there. So uh, just an overview where all the objects will be created and the runtime data is stored. Then we have stack which is used to store the local variables, partial results and also helps in method invocation and return. That also we have seen in our uh, stack video also. Then we have native method stack. So native methods are stored in this specific stack area. And in the end we have PC register. So it's the programming counter register. In this address of the instruction currently being executed in the JVM is stored. Yeah. Next question is, uh, can I use static public void instead of public static void? So this is a kind of tricky question. So the answer to this will be yes, we can use it because in this case compiler will run completely fine because the order of specifiers does not matter. So these are the specifiers public static void. So we can mention them in any order and it will work in Java. Next is uh, what are the access specifiers available in Java. So access specifiers are nothing but they control the access of your uh, variables and methods. So there are mainly four types of access specifiers. First one is public. So if any variable or method is defined as public, it can be accessed by any class or any method. Next one is protected. So if we define any variable with a protected access specifier, it can be accessed in the same class, in the subclass and in the same package. The third one is default. So if we do not define any uh, access specifier, so by default, all the classes and methods are of default scope. So default, we do not need to mention anything. It will be by default the default scope. So it can be accessed in the same class and in the same package. So the difference between protected and default will be the default will not be accessible in the subclass. The last one is private, which is the most strict access specifier. So whatever component is defined private, it can be accessed only and only in the same class. 
the next question that can come to you in interview is uh, what is the purpose of default constructor for the default constructor if we do not provide the compiler will automatically provide us the main purpose of default constructor is to assign the default value of the instance variables so suppose uh, in this example we have this int a and uh, string b as instance variable and we do not define any uh, default constructor so by default compiler will provide a default constructor to this class and when we create uh, an object of this main class then automatically a will be assigned value 0 and b will be assigned value null because for int the default value is 0 and for string it will be assigned the value of null so that is the main purpose of default constructor and this is also a very important question which uh, can be asked in the interview so can we make a constructor final so we know that uh, we need to create objects of the class in uh, in other classes as well so if we try to uh, make the constructor final then we may not be able to access it in other classes that we have already seen in our previous question for access specifiers ideally your answer should be that we should not be making constructor as final because it cannot be overridden by the subclasses or uh, new objects cannot be created in other classes so even if we create it uh, create the constructor final it will not give us any compilation error it will compile successfully the next question which can be asked to you is uh, why the main method in java is static so we have already seen public static void main so that is the entry point method uh, for java classes so why that specific method is static so the main method in java is static so that jvm should be able to call it without object creation as method this method is an entry point for execution of the program and this question can come as a follow-up question to the previous question itself like is it possible to run our java class without main method so if we see from java 1.7 uh, we cannot do that uh, if we see for java 1.5 and 1.6 it was possible to run a java class using the static blocks so the static blocks can be executed even if there is no main method but starting from java 1.7 we cannot run the java class without main method as jvm will look for main method while try to run the class and it will throw a runtime error which is main method not found in the class and this is also an important question like can we override static methods so to answer this specific question we should have a better knowledge of what is overriding what is polymorphism and what are static methods how they are actually getting bound uh, in the jvm so the static math so the answer to this question should be static methods cannot be overridden and the reason that you should be giving is like as overriding is based on dynamic binding at the runtime because overriding is uh, defined as runtime polymorphism so the binding of the method is done at runtime but the static methods are bonded using static binding which is at compile time so that is the reason static methods cannot be overridden so here you can see the overriding is a runtime polymorphism overloading on the other hand is a compile time polymorphism this is also one uh, important question like what is constructor chaining so constructor chaining is a process that enables us to call one constructor from another constructor of the class with respect to the current class object only so we can use this keyword for this to perform the constructor chaining so let's see that with an example so here we have a uh, student class constructors so here one constructor is expecting four variables one is expecting two and the last one is expecting only one so while creating an object we will call this uh, student constructor with the four arguments so what is written in that two of the instance variable are assigned value based on the values provided but the two values are passed to the other constructor which is expecting two variables id and age so using this keyword so this and passing these two values this will uh, implicitly call this specific constructor and pass the id and age to this and further you can see in this constructor itself id is getting assigned to the instance variable id but for age it is again calling uh, the another constructor using this keyword here so it is only passing age and calling the single argument constructor so in the last one we can see the age is also set so in, uh, what is multiple inheritance and how to achieve it in java so it's a kind of trick question as well so that uh, the interviewer wants to understand your knowledge of uh, inheritance or oops concept in java so first you should be explaining what is multiple inheritance and after that you can explain like 
if it is feasible in java if not then you can give your reason okay so let's first explain what is multiple inheritance so if a class inheriting from two or more classes that type of inheritance is known as multiple inheritance and this specific inheritance is not supported in java due to a problem known as diamond problem so if you mention these terms in the interview this will definitely give a good impact on the interview that you know uh, the internal details how the inheritance is working and what are the problems associated to the inheritance types which are not supported in java so to explain the diamond problem you can say you can give an example like suppose there is a class c which is inheriting from class a and b and those both classes which are a and b have a same method so when you try to call it from a child class object then there will be an ambiguity so it will not be able to understand which method to call because both a and b are parent of c and they are having the same method uh, which is defined in both of these classes as we already know that uh, compile time errors are better than the runtime errors because we can handle them while developing so that uh, there are no issues while we are executing the classes so java flag this specific error at the compile time only if you try to inherit two classes so it does not matter if uh, on in those two classes that same method is available or not if you try to inherit two classes java will throw this uh, specific error that you cannot do that continuing with the uh, inheritance another important question which can come to you is uh, regarding aggregation and composition so because these two terms are little bit uh, similar and confusing so it is a good candidate for interview question so first what is aggregation when a class contains a reference to a class it owns for example an employee class having an object of uh, address class that specific relation is known as aggregation and composition is also similar to aggregation but the contained class object cannot exist without the container class object aggregation actually represents the weak relationship whereas composition represents the strong relationship between two entities this is also an important question like why pointers are not supported in java first one will be they are unsafe to use uh, second one you can say it increases the complexity of code and as java is known for its simplicity of code so the pointers are not supported in java the last one which is the very important one is jvm will be doing the memory management so that user will not be able to acquire the access of memory directly so that also rules out a security issue as well so that is one of the main reason the pointer is not supported in java the next question is can we use this and super together in a constructor so we already know this we are using to call the constructor of the same class and super we are using to call the constructor of uh, parent class answer to this question will be no because this and super must be the first statement in the class constructor so they cannot be used uh, together in the same constructor in many interviews you will be presented with a code snippet and asked for the output so suppose uh, this is one of those cases so here uh, we will be uh, demonstrating you what is method overloading with the type promotion so here we have uh, an add method which is overloaded first one is int long second one is int 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 so in the main class we try to call add 10 and 20 so but if you see 10 and 20 both are integers so first it will see how many number of arguments are there so only one method is matching which is add int a long b but there is a problem because we are expecting second uh, argument as long but in this case it is an integer still it will go ahead with that why because of the type promotion so what is method overloading with type promotion so one data type can be promoted to another implicitly if no exact matching is found so in this case we do not have the exact matching so in that case the type promotion will come into picture so here we have uh, the all the available promotions so uh, byte can be promoted to short byte can be promoted to int as well uh, short can be promoted to int character can be promoted to int int can be promoted to float long double float only double and long can be promoted to double and float so in this case as it's an integer and it can be promoted to long so the first method will be called in this case the or the first line will print output as 30 and the third one is simple all the integers so it will call it and output will be 60. now this is very important question which is being asked in the interviews is difference between method overloading and method overriding so method overloading is we have already seen it is 
a compile time event but method overriding is a runtime activity there are other differences as well for method overloading the parameters must be different as we have seen in our just previous code snippet so the parameters must be different then we can say the methods are overloaded but it is completely opposite in case of overriding the parameters must be same then the method is considered as overridden the overloading is happened within the same class but the overriding is happened between parent and child class the next question which can come to you is can we change the scope of overridden method in subclass so the answer to that will be yes we can change the scope of overridden method in subclass however we cannot decrease the accessibility of method what that means that means if something is declared private in the um, parent class it can only be changed to protected public or default so that means we cannot restrict it more we cannot decrease the accessibility we can increase the accessibility but we cannot decrease it so suppose the method is uh, protected in the parent class so in the base class it can be protected but it can be changed to public and default also it cannot be changed to private if we try to change it to private that means we are decreasing the accessibility of the method the next important question is can we initialize the final blank variable so final variable we already know it's a variable whose value we cannot change once it has been initialized so but if we define uh, a final variable but do not assign any value that specific uh, variable is known as final blank variable so the question to question will be can we actually initialize its value once we uh, have not we have just declared it and not provided the value so the answer to this question will be yes we can initialize if it is non static we can initialize it in the constructor only and if it is a static blank variable it can be initialized in static block only this is the most asked question in the interview for both freshers as well as experienced so this one is what is final finally and finalize and what is their main difference so final is a keyword and it's a access specifier finally we know it's a block in exception handling and finalize is a method which is used to perform cleanup before the garbage collection happened for the object so the final is actually applicable to the variables methods and classes finally block is a block which is avail which can be uh, available after either catch or try block so what is the main function of finally block is if some code that we want to execute irrespective of exception occurred we can define the cleanup or uh, like database connection file closing uh, statements we can use the finally block and finalize is a method available in object class which can be overridden where we can define some cleanup activities that we want to perform before the object is actually getting garbage collected that's it for this video i will try to compile some more important interview questions for java thanks for watching if you like the video please do share and subscribe please provide your valuable feedback that will help me to improve my content thanks for watching see you next time